Franz Joseph I or Francis Joseph I was Emperor of Austria, King of Hungary, Croatia and Bohemia, from 1 May 1850 until 24 August 1866 he was President of the German Confederation. In December 1848, Emperor Ferdinand abdicated the throne as part of Minister President Felix zu Schwarzenberg's plan to end the revolutions of 1848 in Austria, which allowed Ferdinand's nephew Franz Joseph to ascend to the throne. The event took place in the Moravian city of Olomouc. Largely considered to be a reactionary, Franz Joseph spent his early reign resisting constitutionalism in his domains. The Austrian Empire was forced to cede most of its claim to Lombardy Venetia to the Kingdom of Piedmont Sardinia following the conclusion of the Second Italian War of Independence in 1859 and the Third Italian War of Independence in 1866. Although Franz Joseph ceded no territory to the Kingdom of Prussia after the Austrian defeat in the Austro Prussian War, the Peace of Prague settled the German question in favour of Prussia, which prevented the unification of Germany under the House of Habsburg. Franz Joseph was troubled by nationalism during his entire reign. He concluded the Ausgleich of 1867, which granted greater autonomy to Hungary, hence transforming the Austrian Empire into the Austro-Hungarian Empire under his dual monarchy. His domains were then ruled peacefully for the next 45 years. Although Franz Joseph personally suffered the tragedies of the execution of his brother, Maximilian, in 1867, the suicide of his son, Crown Prince Rudolf in 1889, and the assassination of his wife, Empress Elizabeth, in 1898, after the Austro-Prussian War, Austria-Hungary turned its attention to the Balkans which was a hot spot of international tension due to conflicting interests with the Russian Empire. The Bosnian crisis was a result of Franz Joseph's annexation of Bosnia and Herzegovina in 1908, which had been occupied by his troops since the Congress of Berlin. On 28 June 1914, the assassination of the heir presumptive to the Austro-Hungarian throne, his nephew Archduke Franz Ferdinand, at the hands of Gavrilo Princip, a Serbian nationalist, resulted in Austria-Hungary's declaration of war against the Kingdom of Serbia, which was Russia's ally. This activated a system of alliances which resulted in World War I. Franz Joseph died on 21 November 1916, after ruling his domains for almost 68 years. He was succeeded by his grandnephew Charles. He was the longest reigning emperor of Austria. Name. His name in German was Franz Joseph I and in Hungarian was I, Ferenc Joseph. His names in other languages were Romanian, Francis Joseph, Croatian and Bosnian, Franjo Josipi, Serbian, Slovene, Frank Joseph I, Czech, Frantisek Joseph I, Slovak, Frantisek Joseph I, Italian, Francesco Giuseppe I, Early Life, Franz Joseph was born in the Schönbrunn Palace in Vienna, the oldest son of Archduke Franz Karl, and his wife Princess Sophie of Bavaria, because his uncle, from 1835 the Emperor Ferdinand, was weak-minded, and his father unambitious and retiring. The young Archduke, Franzil, was brought up by his mother as a future emperor with emphasis on devotion, responsibility and diligence. Franzil came to idolize his grandfather, der Gute Kaiser Franz, who had died shortly before the former's fifth birthday, as the ideal monarch. At the age of 13, young Archduke Franz started a career as a colonel in the Austrian army. From that point onward, his fashion was dictated by army style and for the rest of his life he normally wore the uniform of a military officer. Franz Joseph was soon joined by three younger brothers, Archduke Ferdinand Maximilian, Archduke Karl Ludwig, and Archduke Ludwig Victor, and a sister, Maria Anna, who died at the age of four. Following the resignation of the Chancellor Prince Metternich during the revolutions of 1848, the young Archduke, 
who it was widely expected would soon succeed his uncle on the throne, was appointed governor of Bohemia on 6 April but never took up the post. Instead, Franz was sent to the front in Italy, joining Field Marshal Radetzky on campaign on 29 April, receiving his baptism of fire on 5 May at Santa Lucia. By all accounts he handled his first military experience calmly and with dignity. Around the same time, the imperial family was fleeing revolutionary Vienna for the calmer setting of Innsbruck, in Tyrol. Soon, the Archduke was called back from Italy, joining the rest of his family at Innsbruck by mid-June. It was at Innsbruck at this time that Franz Joseph first met his cousin Elizabeth, his future bride, then a girl of ten. But apparently the meeting made little impact. Following victory over the Italians at Custazza in late July, the court felt safe to return to Vienna, and Franz Joseph travelled with them. But within a few months Vienna again appeared unsafe, and in September the court left again, this time for Olmutz in Moravia. By now, Alfred I, Prince of Windisch Graz, the influential military commander in Bohemia, was determined to see the young Archduke soon put onto the throne. It was thought that a new ruler would not be bound by the oaths to respect constitutional government to which Ferdinand had been forced to agree, and that it was necessary to find a young, energetic emperor to replace the kindly, but mentally unfit in emperor. It was thus at Olmutz on 2 December that, by the abdication of his uncle Ferdinand and the renunciation of his father, the mild-mannered Franz Karl, Franz Joseph succeeded as Emperor of Austria. It was at this time that he first became known by his second as well as his first Christian name. The name, Franz Joseph, was chosen deliberately to bring back memories of the new emperor's great-granduncle, Emperor Joseph II, remembered as a modernizing reformer. Domestic policy. Under the guidance of the new Prime Minister, Prince Schwarzenberg, the new emperor at first pursued a cautious course granting a constitution in early 1849. At the same time, military campaigns were necessary against the Hungarians, who had rebelled against Habsburg central authority under the name of their ancient liberties. Franz Joseph was also almost immediately faced with a renewal of the fighting in Italy, with King Charles Albert of Sardinia taking advantage of setbacks in Hungary to resume the war in March 1849. Soon, though, the military tide began to turn in favour of Franz Joseph and the Austrian white coats. Almost immediately, Charles Albert was decisively beaten by Radetzky at Navarra and forced both to sue for peace and to abdicate his throne. In Hungary, the situation was more grave and Austrian defeat was quite possible. Sensing a need to secure his right to rule, he sought help from Russia, requesting the intervention of Tsar Nicholas I in order to prevent the Hungarian insurrection developing into a European calamity, Russian troops entered Hungary in support of the Austrians and the revolution was crushed by late summer of 1849. With order now restored throughout the empire, Franz Joseph felt free to go back on the constitutional concessions he had made, especially as the Austrian parliament, meeting at Kremsia, had behaved, in the young emperor's view, abominably. The 1849 constitution was suspended, and a policy of absolutist centralism was established, guided by the Minister of the Interior, Alexander Bach. The next few years saw the seeming recovery of Austria's position on the international scene following the near disasters of 1848-1849. Under Schwarzenberg's guidance, Austria was able to stymie Prussian scheming to create a new German federation under Prussian leadership excluding Austria. After Schwarzenberg's premature death in 1852, he could not be replaced by statesmen of equal stature, and the emperor effectively took over himself as prime minister. Assassination attempt in 1853 On the 18th of February 1853, the emperor survived an assassination attempt by Hungarian nationalist Janusz Libenyi. The emperor was taking a stroll with one of his officers, Maximilian Karl Lamoral O'Donnell, on a city bastion, when Libenyi approached him. 
He immediately struck the emperor from behind with a knife straight at the neck. Franz Joseph almost always wore a uniform, which had a high collar that almost completely enclosed the neck. The collars of uniforms at that time were made from very sturdy material exactly to counter this kind of attack. Even though the emperor was wounded and bleeding, the collar saved his life. Count O'Donnell struck Le Ben Yi down with his sabre. O'Donnell, hitherto only a count by virtue of his Irish nobility, was thereafter made a count of the Habsburg Empire, conferred with the Commander's Cross of the Royal Order of Leopold, and his customary O'Donnell arms were augmented by the initials and shield of the Ducal House of Austria, with additionally the double-headed eagle of the Empire. These arms are emblazoned on the portico of No. 2 Mirabelplatz in Salzburg where O'Donnell built his residence thereafter. Another witness who happened to be nearby, the butcher Joseph Ettenreich, quickly overwhelmed Le Benny. For his deed he was later elevated to nobility by the emperor and became Joseph von Ettenreich. Le Benny was subsequently put on trial and condemned to death for attempted regicide. He was executed on the Simmering Hyde. After this unsuccessful attack, the emperor's brother Ferdinand Maximilian Joseph, later emperor of Mexico, called upon Europe's royal families for donations to a new church on the site of the attack. The church was to be a votive offering for the survival of the emperor. It is located on Ringstrasse in the district of Alsergrund, close to the University of Vienna, and is known as the Votivkircher. Austro-Hungarian Compromise of 1867 The 1850s witnessed several failures of Austrian external policy the Crimean War and breakup with Russia, and defeat in the Second Italian War of Independence. The setbacks continued in the 1860s with defeat in the Austro-Prussian War of 1866, which resulted in the Austro-Hungarian Compromise of 1867. Political difficulties in Austria mounted continuously through the late 1800s and into the 20th century but Franz Joseph remained immensely respected. His patriarchal authority held the empire together while the politicians squabbled. Foreign policy The German question the main foreign policy goal of Franz Joseph I had been the unification of Germany under the House of Habsburg. This was justified on grounds of precedence, from 1452 to the end of the Holy Roman Empire in 1806. With only one period of interruption under the Wittelsbachs, the Habsburgs had generally held the German crown. However, Franz Joseph's desire to retain the non-German territories of the Habsburg Austrian Empire in the event of German unification proved problematic. There quickly developed two factions, one party of German intellectuals favoring a greater Germany under the House of Habsburg, the others favoring a lesser Germany. The Greater Germans favored the inclusion of Austria in a new all-German state on the grounds that Austria had always been a part of Germanic empires, that it was the leading power of the German Confederation, and that it would be absurd to exclude 8 million Austrian Germans from an all-German nation state. The champions of a lesser Germany argued against the inclusion of Austria on the grounds that it was a multi-nation state, not a German one, and that its inclusion would bring millions of non-Germans into the German nation-state. If Greater Germany was to prevail, the crown would necessarily have to go to Franz Joseph, who had no desire to cede it in the first place to anyone else. On the other hand, if the idea of a smaller Germany won out, the German crown could of course not possibly go the Emperor of Austria, but would naturally be offered to the head of the largest and most powerful German state outside of Austria, the King of Prussia. The contest between the two ideas thus quickly developed into a contest between Austria and Prussia, after Prussia decisively won the Seven Weeks' War. This question was solved. Austria lost no territories as long as they remained out of German affairs. The Three Emperors League in 1873, two years after the unification of Germany, 
Franz Joseph entered into the League of Three Emperors with Kaiser Wilhelm I of Germany and Tsar Alexander II of Russia. The League had been designed by the German Chancellor Otto von Bismarck as an attempt to maintain the peace of Europe. It would last intermittently until 1887. The Czech question Many Czech people were waiting for political changes in monarchy, including Thomas Garrig Masaryk and others. Masaryk served in the Reichsrat from 1891 to 1893 in the Young Czech Party and again from 1907 to 1914 in the Realist Party. But he did not campaign for the independence of Czechs and Slovaks from Austria-Hungary. In 1909 he helped Hinko Hinkovic in Vienna in the defense during the fabricated trial against mostly prominent Croats and Serbs members of the Croatia-Serb coalition, and others, who were sentenced to more than 150 years and a number of death penalties. The Czech question was not solved during all Franz Joseph's political career. The Vatican in 1903, Franz Joseph's veto of Cardinal Rampolla's election to the papacy was transmitted to the conclave by Cardinal Jan Puzina. It was the last use of such a veto, because new Pope Pius X provided penalties for such. Bosnia and Herzegovina The mid-1870s witnessed a series of violent rebellions against Ottoman rule in the Balkans, and equally violent and repressive responses from the Turks. The Russian Tsar, Alexander II, wanting to intervene against the Ottomans, sought and obtained an agreement with Austria-Hungary. In the Budapest Conventions of 1877, the two powers agreed that Russia would annex Bessarabia, and Austria-Hungary would observe a benevolent neutrality toward Russia in the pending war with the Turks. As compensation for this support, Russia agreed to Austria-Hungary's annexation of Bosnia-Herzegovina. A scant 15 months later, the Russians imposed the Treaty of San Stefano on the Ottomans which reneged on the Budapest Accord and declared that Bosnia-Herzegovina would be jointly occupied by Russian and Austrian troops. The Treaty of San Stefano was overturned by the 1878 Treaty of Berlin, which allowed for sole Austrian occupation of Bosnia-Herzegovina, but did not specify a final disposition of the provinces. This omission was addressed in the Three Emperors League Treaty of 1881, where both Germany and Russia endorsed Austria's right to annex Bosnia-Herzegovina however, by 1897, under a new Tsar. The Russian imperial government had managed, again, to withdraw its support for Austrian annexation of Bosnia-Herzegovina. The Russian foreign minister, Count Michael Muraviv, stated that an Austrian annexation of Bosnia-Herzegovina would raise an extensive question requiring special scrutiny. In 1908, the Russian Foreign Minister, Alexander Izvolsky again, and for the third time, offered Russian support for the annexation of Bosnia and Herzegovina by Austria-Hungary, in exchange for Austrian support for the opening of the Bosphorus Strait and the Dardanelles to Russian warships. The Austria's Foreign Minister, Alois von Ehrenthal, pursued this offer vigorously, resulting in the quid pro quo understanding with Izvolsky, reached on 16 September 1908 at the Bucklaw Conference. However, Izvolsky made this agreement with Ehrenthal, without the knowledge of Tsar Nicholas II, his government in St. Petersburg, nor any of the other foreign powers including Britain, France and Serbia, based upon the assurances of the Bucklaw Conference, not to mention the preceding treaties. Franz Joseph signed the proclamation announcing the annexation of Bosnia-Herzegovina into the empire on 6 October 1908. However, a diplomatic crisis erupted, as both the Serbs and, incomprehensibly, the Italians demanded compensation for the annexation, which the Austrian-Hungarian government would not entertain. The matter was not resolved until the revision of the Treaty of Berlin in April 1909. The incident served to exacerbate tensions between Austria-Hungary and the Serbs. 
outbreak of World War I. After the death of Crown Prince Rudolf in 1889, Franz Joseph's nephew, Archduke Franz Ferdinand, became heir to the throne. On 28 June 1914, Franz Ferdinand and his morganatic wife, Countess Sophie Chotek, were assassinated on a visit to Sarajevo. When he heard the news of the assassination, Franz Joseph said that one has not to defy the Almighty. In this manner a superior power has restored that order which I unfortunately was unable to maintain, while the emperor was shaken, and interrupted his vacation in order to return to Vienna. He soon resumed his vacation to his imperial villa at Bad Ischl, with the emperor five hours away from the capital. Most of the decision-making during the July crisis fell to Count Leopold Birch told. The Austrian Foreign Minister, Count Franz Conrad von Hotzendorf, the Chief of Staff for the Austrian Army, and the rest of the ministers. On 21 July, Franz Joseph was apparently surprised by the severity of the ultimatum that was to be sent to the Serbs, and expressed his concerns that Russia would be unwilling to stand idly by, yet he nevertheless chose to not question Berchtold's judgment. A week after the ultimatum, on 28 July, Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia, and two days later, the Austro-Hungarians and the Russians went to war. Within weeks, the French and British entered the fray. Because of his age, Franz Joseph was unable to take as much as an active part in the war in comparison to past conflicts. Death Franz Joseph died in the Schönbrunn Palace on the evening of 21 November 1916, aged 86, during World War I. His death was a result of his developing pneumonia of the right lung several days after catching a cold while he was walking in Schönbrunn Park with the King of Bavaria. He was succeeded by his grandnephew Karl. But two years later, after the defeat in World War I, the Austro-Hungarian monarchy was dissolved. His 67-year reign is the third longest in the recorded history of Europe. He is buried in the Kaisergruft in Vienna, where flowers are still left by monarchists.